Hey guys, welcome back. Uh, we got the second match for you guys here, Asahida versus Neirea. Uh If you guys missed it, we did just see Ecop get eliminated by the first qualifier, Bunny Muffins, in uh, a pretty unfortunate sequence of events for Ecop. It seemed like Ecop had the slight edge in most games, but uh, well, it didn't quite end up for him uh, that way. Uh, in this match, however, we have uh, we have two new players, a bunch of new decks. And uh, you were talking about in the break how uh, Neiria is, is bringing the flavor yet again. What do you mean by that? What's, what's interesting about his setup here? Well, so um, he is sometimes bringing those cheesy decks like Maligus, Warlock, and even though it's a normal deck, but, uh, you know, Rogue, Freeze, Freeze Mage. Well, like looking at Asahida, Hunter, Warlock, Warrior, you know, this is the strongest setup. Those are the strongest yeah, we, we already saw that. Right? Yeah, we, we saw that, exactly. And uh, well, they, actually, the, the setup lost to, to Paladin. So mm -hmm. kind of the cheesy deck won. Um, and for Naria, like this setup is, is much different. So um, I really wonder which mage he's bringing. There's so many mages now. There is the Flame Waker, the Freeze Mage, um, Maligo's Mage, uh, Major yeah, Domo Mage. I've heard yeah. about that too. <laughs> but are these really tournament quality decks? Like every time I see a tournament, I see Mage. It's it's basically always Freeze Mage in the last like few weeks. Um, like are, are these are decks are good for like ladder and conquest format in tournaments is kind of like ladder, but you just don't really see it. Why, why do you think that is? Um, I think like with Freeze Mage, people try to uh, have a deck that's really hard to counter. So Freeze Mage is always trying, uh, always able to get one win. Mm -hmm. With Flame Waker, well, I've seen some players bring Flame Waker, and Reynard had a lot of success with it at the ESL Legendary series. Mm -hmm. But it's a it's a tough deck to play sometimes. Uh, same as Rogue, right? Those are tempo decks, and uh, I personally I don't like those decks that much. Like I prefer combo. But Nairia always loved the the Rogue and tempo decks, so maybe he is bringing the Flame Waker here for this tournament. Mm -hmm. Well, we had the bracket there for a second. It's still being filled out a little bit. We'll have that filled up for you guys uh, by the end of the day for sure. Uh, again, we are playing uh, right now. We're getting from 16 players down to eight. We're seeing who the um, who the day two dudes are going to be. Yeah, uh, certainly. Like we are, oh. we're having single elimination and um, eight players. I just sneeze there. <laughs> no problem. <Sorry. laughs> it's like. I was wondering if you were just bringing that the new thought uh, after that. <laughs> okay. The comeback. Yeah. All right. So, like, looking at this lineups for now, um, Freeze Mage, if this is a Freeze Mage, I think um, it will give an edge to Nairia. Uh, a very hard deck that you don't face that much on ladder. So, if Asahida does not have that much experience how to play against this deck, he might be in trouble. Then, Rogue is always really hard to play against, uh, especially in the hands of uh, an expert like Nairia who played this deck uh, so many times before. And uh, the Warrior is probably Patron. Uh, Nairia was playing a, a bit of Patron himself, but I think Contra Warrior is still a, a very good deck and, uh, and players have a lot of success with it. Mm -hmm. So it might be either. Yeah, I think, uh, I think you got pretty good uh, analysis here. I'm hoping that it is Freeze Mage. Uh, Freeze Mage doesn't do that well against Hunter, but it's not the worst. Um, it's close to even against a Grim Patron Warrior, and I believe Freeze Mage does quite well against all the Warlock decks, so it's it's like even-ish and favored in one matchup. That's that's the type of deck you want to bring to a tournament. It doesn't seem too bad. It doesn't seem that cheesy, really, to me. Uh, seems like fairly good strategy. Uh, one thing to note is I've actually actually don't think. Oh, look at that! We got the brackets. There we go. Oh, Let's fill yeah. that. Uh, already, man, that was fast. All right. So what do we got here? We got the uh, Nerea versus Esahida match. Is uh, the third one from the top. It is the second match of the day. So. Uh, probably after this, we're, going, we're doing Show versus Gara. I think we're going to move in that order. I'm not too sure. But uh, we are going to get through all of them. We're going to see all the dudes today. And yeah. Uh, yeah, that's right. Quite a lot of big names there, including our returning champion, Forsen Boys. But that. And also a swap because um, originally there was supposed to be Orange and Tides of Time, but we'll have Purple Drunk versus Dog instead. Mm -hmm. All right, so the game is on. Uh, let's see Mage versus Hunter. Is that correct? Yeah, I think it might be swapped. Um, it, I don't see a mage in the lineup of Asahida. Uh, it seems like it might be like a bug with spectator mode. Um, sometimes the spectator mode doesn't really work too well after a recent patch, and with Tavern Brawl, there's a lot of patches ongoing. So uh, some some technical difficulties do often uh, arise when uh, when you try to have a tournament that's live. So we're sorry about that. Does look like Freeze Mage, does look like uh, Mid Range or Hybrid Hunter. Dr. Boom and Hunter, how about that? 
Then midrange, that's mid that's midrange for sure. Um, with and th this will be the third hunter we see in the third midrange, because both Ikop and Banimafins they they were playing the deck. Uh, big mm -hmm. tones, big creatures, probably such belchers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, could be. Um, do you actually see uh, Sludge Belcher that frequently in midrange? Uh, Sludge Belcher in, in midrange? Um, I think p people play one uh, mostly. Um, m one should be staple. Uh, two might be too much because you, you want to play off hub. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, again, we're going through some issues right now, guys. So we'll, we'll have the game for you guys in just a second. I do want to mention that even though I've cast a lot of tournaments, I've uh, seen a lot of players play. I don't think Nerea has actually been one of them. Um, I don't think I've ever actually personally cast Nerea games. And um, he's been kind of like a player that, to me, uh, you know, brings up brings up some pretty good, uh, some high quality gameplay. But every now and then in a tournament, you see like one of those plays that you never really imagined would happen. And he's been one of those player, one of those players that has produced these moments. It's like in, in like the really crazy highlights that uh, you frequently see. So I'm hoping we'll see some of that magic today. And if you guys don't know what I'm talking about, you know, we've we've seen plays where, uh, you know, you like play Leroy and like backstab your own Leroy to like fill his board so your opponent has nothing to trade into him. You know that that type of stuff we've seen from Neria in the past. And it's yeah, it, Hearthstone's not a game where you often have these moments to really highlight your ability and your creativity but when there is people go crazy so that's pretty nice he's definitely a player who can uh, find those spots and and make those great plays but he is mm. still searching for the win for the tournament win and uh you know htc1 was forced in his first win maybe this htc2 will be actually nairia's throne um, but looking at the game we have that midrange versus freeze mage Mm -hmm. It looks like Nairia has a pretty decent hand with a lot of card draw. Uh, he didn't take that much damage. But I wonder, like many times I've seen this, this matchup, and uh, Mage had trouble with the big creatures. But there's High Main follow up by Dr. Boom. Freeze Mage is struggling against that. Man, that is so much damage, though. Yeah, and he still has a blizzard uh, to, to stop the board for now. He has uh, some draw. Yeah, the blizzard uh, gets played out pretty quickly. You're right about that. Um, it doesn't seem like a great blizzard to me, but you do prevent that six damage. You do stall out the game. And blizzard seems like a card that's you know, maybe a bit hard to play later on. So I can see it. So while we were fixing some of the spectator bugs, I don't know if you guys witnessed, but in the first few turns of the game, we saw Nerea drop a Doomsayer. So one Doomsayer is actually out already. So that Frost Nova doesn't really hold as much value as it might otherwise. Also, it's important that Nerea had an Ice Barrier. And uh, Ice Barrier early is very important versus Hunter. You want to get that life as, um, as fast as possible to, to just prolong the game into standard Alexstrasza combo. He does not have Alexstrasza yeah. for now, but he has so much burst. Um, maybe if he gets a bit bored, he might actually start unloading. Mm -hmm. No ice block though. Oh, whoa, Torison. That's a little unfortunate. Um, what do you think the play is here? You can freeze for two turns, so you don't really need to waste Frostbolt or anything to try to kill before. <laughs> Frostbolt face. <laughs> no, no, no. I, th I think you can you can cast the the freeze and um, okay. get that the, one damage in. Maybe it matters later on. It might. Yeah, damage does matter. He doesn't have like Straza, so if he gets Torison next turn, maybe or Blizzard into Torison Nova on nine, uh, he might try to 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 have the kill with just burst. With a good Torison, like he has so much damage, it's 25 at least, with double Fireball, Frostbolt, and Pyro, uh, Pyroblast. Yeah, there's quite a lot of damage in the hand. Um, without Ice Block up, though, it's kind of hard to really drop Torison, though. Yeah, he will have to Blizzard in this turn. Um, yeah, or... he, he just has to draw well in the next few turns for this to really work out. So from Asahida's perspective, he has the board for now, which is not bad. He has one quick shot. He has the, the secrets that are not doing much. There is a nice book for Nerea. Oh, four though. 
that yeah. can be a pretty big deal. Every point of damage matters in this matchup. Mm -hmm. There is a half a draw. It's Not necessarily. <laughs> but come um, on, it's always half hard. Here you can Houndmaster, and it kind of protects from Flame Strike because otherwise he, uh, Neria can ping the high main and then Flame Strike to clear. Now when um, he does cast the Flame Strike, uh, the two hyenas are going to remain. Yeah, but now this is what we talked about, like Frost Nova Torison to give himself a chance. Next turn he will be able to Ice Block, deal some damage, and then uh, possibly Pyroblast. He just needs to count the damage, how much is it? Um, Taunt is annoying, because Torison will not be able to attack. But if Asahida takes um, like 4 points of damage, he will be in lethal range. 7 mana for 15. Like, if, if he gets a f um, Ice Lance next turn, that will be lethal. Like, not next turn, but like it will be lethal in two turns with Ice Lance, because Ice Lance will be exactly 4 more damage that he needs. Is it? So well, he, has he has 15 the, he has with the double block. He has the ice block next turn because he's he's kind of going to die here. Yeah, so he has 8 left. And uh, oh, with Alex Straza, he still yeah, needs the ice block. Yeah, he, he might have the uh, he might have an extra turn by frost bolting his mad scientist. That's a 50 50 on an ice block. Right? Uh, yeah, it should be. Um, he used one ice uh, barrier. He will have one. What about flame strike here, actually? If you flame strike this, yeah, seems good. Like I was trying to see lethals if there is a possibility because he had so much damage, but that's twenty-five, mm -hmm. so he will be missing four. Uh, with, with this, he still has a lot of damage, and he has that Alexstrasza. So basically, just clear the board, Alexstrasza, and win next turn. Ish. Not yeah, yeah, it's it's always a little complicated with with this deck. Um, you know, decks these days are as aggressive as possible. So when you're playing a deck to try to stall, things go wrong in every game. Um, but I mean, this this deck is around because it can come back in a lot of these situations. So, all right, looks like Nerea is kind of going for it here. Um, this does mean he's trying to set up for a lethal next turn, and I don't see it yet. Um, he just needs to, like, if he goes to Lextraza now, he will just need another Ice Block or yeah, basically Ice Block because the, the Ice Block will be popped, I believe, with uh, this on board. I or... guess, well, the, the idea by playing Alastraza is that um, Asahida will have to either kill Alastraza or the Mad Scientist. And if he kills the Mad Scientist, um, it should be fine. Like, he doesn't necessarily have lethal in hand, right? Because he, uh -huh. he has to kill one, or yeah. else he will actually die. Yeah, there is the, the freezing trap, so he needs to, to kill the small one, at least. Or... Or not. Like, because it's explosive... Explosive kills the mage if he does the attack with, with Alastraza. I think, like, what Asahida needs to do... Uh, there is a freezing trap, right? So he kills Mad Scientist, and... Uh, but then, like, I think he should attack first. He should pop the block first. Oh man, it's it's bad at either way. Like no, 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 no. What what if what if you you don't proc the block? You leave him at one, so the block the the, the block can't proc on his own turn, and then you give him a nice barrier, and then you just ping from this point on. That's exactly what he's doing. Yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah, that's perfect sequencing. So now Neria has to search for an ice block. Um, or else he's dead. Uh, that's true. He needs that ice block here uh, with Iceland's. That's, Whoa! That's, Whoa, that's lethal. That's, yeah, that's exact. Wait, he, he missed lethal here. Oh my god. Well, I think he just realized that we had a little six, bit of a. Seven, eight, of yeah, an maybe I just realized it. Oh, and he gets saved with the ice block. Oh, wow. Oh, man. How about that? The pro plays. <laughs> miss, miss lethal win anyway. That's he was how so we do it, boys. Nice yeah, he was. Yeah, but man, it sometimes happens. Like you, you just uh, you're so focused not to die that you just don't see the fact that you win. This is just advanced BM, guys. This is how you play pro pro level Hearthstone, guys. Pro level Hearthstone. This is what's uh, cheesing in uh, in Hearthstone. <laughs> kind of. Kind of. I don't think there's really any need to kill that uh, Alistraza. 
Oh man, that sucks for Asahida. Yeah, that that does. Um, the chance to draw and block was reasonably high, but still, though, when you have lethal, usually you expect to be punished for it. But sometimes the RNG gods uh, spare you. So that was one of those times. And Nerea does pick up the win with the Freeze Mage as a result. Um, Asahida is still in a good shape. Like that was just yeah. uh, one game, and Freeze Mage is still a really tough deck to to go through. And there and is a he's, broken warrior. He's bringing Asahida is bringing like the the three kind of powerful classes that we expected a lot of players to bring to the tournament with probably Grim Patron Warrior, uh, whatever kind of warlock. You know, all the warlock versions still kind of work these days, and the the mid range hunter. That seems to be a trend that you know we expected and we see it realized. Um, Neria, as you mentioned, Rogue and Warrior. Uh, do you think we'd see uh, anything like unusual from the Warrior deck? Because we do see the Rogue and the Mage are a bit unusual in themselves. But do you think he's actually daring enough to bring something that isn't a Green Patron Warrior? I think Neria will bring Green Patron. Uh, he definitely respects the fact that this is one of the top decks right now. Even though there is uh, a Control Warrior version with Deathwing and Nefarian uh, just running Whoa. around. And uh, it looks pretty good. Like somebody got to, okay. I think, legend, uh, the first place legend with that deck. But Green mm -hmm. Patient is super powerful. But overall, we'll uh, if Asahida needs to win with Warrior, because Rogue is good versus Warrior, and um, Warlock is bad versus Patron. Mm -hmm. And this is Patron from Neria. Yep, yep. We are getting into the game here in a second. Uh, it, it, does seem, uh, it does seem like it's a Patron deck, but. Um... We won't, we won't see the game for, for just a second here, I believe, uh, as they're getting set up. Um, yeah, I think you're right. What, why do you think Rogue is favored against uh, Warrior decks in general? I mean, I can kind of see the Grim Patron favor, but I feel like whenever I'm playing Control Warrior, I don't really feel bad matching up against the Rogue. Is that just my imagination? No, I, f I think it, definitely you're right. Like I, I, I just meant that Rogue is good versus Patron, but versus Control, I think uh, it favors Control a bit. Like if Control, if Control Warrior is, uh, is able to kill the minions, and uh, never leave a minion on board for Rogue, Rogue will struggle. Basically, the game will go to fatigue, and Rogue will be out of cards, out of damage. Well, that that is a Control Warrior. Uh, so we are going to see Control Warrior from Asahida and Grim Patron Warrior from Nerea, and. Um... I mean, this is kind of a Control Warrior favored matchup, I believe, but I mean, when you when you can do 60 damage to face through two taunts, um, you always have a chance, you know? Yeah, I've seen it many times. It's like favored matchup, but then double frauding and uh, the game is just over. Um, the very important part is that Nairia showed that he's playing Patron because of the loot hoarder. And he doesn't know what Asahida is playing. So Nairia will try to play probably a patron game unless Asahida shows something that's uh, really a control warrior card. Yeah. Um, so how does it look right now? The Grim Patron has a lot of cards. I feel just having a lot of cards is, is kind of bad. So looking at Nairia's... Uh, wait, Nairia's... Where is a shield maiden in Nairia's hand? Well, okay. When that's I a played... cheese card. <laughs> I played Grim Patron Warrior like when when Grim Patron was released, like Blackrock Mountain Week One, and the typical deck at that time had one Shield Maiden. Okay. So I... it's not it's not terrible. Like and and it was doing well. It was like kind of like a stall body, you know. It gives you the armor, and often your opponent will try to remove it. It's I can kind see of like that block ish thing. Definitely, I, I can see merits. Like uh, we've seen Tiddler running shield block and his patron warrior. Um, mm -hmm. Look, the armoring up doesn't really work with battle rage, but then shield maiden is a turn six card, so it might actually be right. But here it will not do much. If this would, if if that would be a, a Torison, that would be amazing. Yeah, yeah. There's just, I mean, we have the double frothing and the charge and the ghoul and a whirlwind and two executes. Yeah, like, it seems it seems alright, but with no Torison, that would be so much mana that Nairia needs. The Nair's laughing already. He's like, oh man. We're we're literally one card away from destroying anything the control warrior can put on the board. Nairia is going to burn a card. Right? Yeah. He's basically yeah, he going is. to burn a card. <laughs> this is so awkward. 
It's fine. It's fine. I'm sure he'll win anyway. It worked. It worked last game. They were just uh, doing this small misplays and uh, oh, uh, death bite. <laughs> Who needs that, right? That hurts. What is the Asahida's perspective, by the way? Like you, you you've played a lot of uh, Contra Warrior as well. It's uh, basically a good matchup, right? Because you just set up those taunts, draw cards, and in the end, you're the one being aggressive. Yeah. The funny thing is, Naria kind of needs a death spite to do that, like sixty damage through two taunts play. Yeah. And uh, Asahita makes the misplay there. Actually, if you play the armor smith, he could have got four armor, and like that's kind of worth it. Isn't it? Like, it if you is. get four armor off, off armor smith, you just do that. Like, it's kind of like, um, you know, you don't really expect to get much more value out of that. It looks like he does want to go with the Emperor Tharson. It seems fine. He's got a big hand. It doesn't seem too clunky. When you have a lot of situational cards, often reducing their mana cost by one doesn't accomplish that much. Yeah, but uh, for, for the Contra Warrior, it seems like getting those three cards right now will just help him. And he's the one being aggressive. So he would just need to play around uh, the big patron turn. He doesn't. He has the brawl as well. So basically, Asahida is in a very good position versus patron. Yeah, Nerea kind of has to draw patron next turn and then make magic happen immediately after. Yeah, oh, not patron. A uh, not patron. Thorison. Thorison. That's right. Yeah, that's right. He's got like all the ridiculous cards, but he, it's they're just too mana to play. Too much mana to play. If he waits till turn ten, he will have eleven mana. Will that be enough? The double throwing war song is nine, then plus two it might be a whirlwind, plus maybe another whirlwind. But does it really have turn ten right now? Well, at this moment, it looks like Asahida is just using the time he's he's given and getting the damage in. Yeah. Even with Acolyte of Pain causing free damage. And Grumash, if he gets Grumash, does he have an activator? He has a shield slam, possibly. Battle Rage Cycle. That's pretty depressing. Nairia wants to draw cards? He wants a Torison, right? Yeah, but okay. So let's say you want Torison on the board. Your opponent's threatening 14. He needs another 4. I mean, it is Control Warrior. Another 4 damage might be hard to do. Yeah. You might actually go into the Patron turn. Mm -hmm. Just to just to kill some stuff and bait out removal, especially because you also have the whirlwind on the coin. But it, uh, it doesn't look that good for Nairia, especially because there is the brawl waiting for him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it feels like you're you're always like gonna lose against something with this play. Like if you make this play. It suddenly looks pretty good, but then when you get brawled, you need to draw a whole another, you know, new batch of cards to actually win the game. And if you wait out, then you literally need, like, what, the other whirlwind or something next turn to have a chance. Yeah. I mean, I think so also a second war kind of suck. Yeah. All right, so for Asahida look, looking good, like he just needs to take care of this of this board. Uh, because Thorison got, got killed, he doesn't have lethal. With Thorison on board, he will be able to kill uh, Nairia with Gromash, uh, Shield Slam. Mm -hmm. That's right, he did pick it up. Gromash off the Acolyte there. Yeah. But then like Thorison was dead, so there was no lethal there. But still, like he's in a very good spot here. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, the uh, the Sylvanas doesn't really represent much of a threat. Uh, Nairia gets a slam. It's a great card, honestly. He goes for the execute, and um, I think this is good enough to to acolyte. Maybe even Ghoul acolyte. Yeah, Ghoul acolyte seems fine. Like that's a whirlwind on board that you might keep. Um, I, I I wonder if Balrage was alright. We we'll just cycle for one card. At this point, Torison is a liability. Like he needs a second War Song, and he needs more Whirlwind effects. Like he needs a second Death Spite, I guess. Well, he just needs a lot of cards, and the Battle Rage might deliver that. Like, what if, what if he just gets a War Song here? Will that be good enough to like play a, a Frothing and just Battle Rage? Mm, yeah, if there is a minion on board, a minion that uh, he can kill um, the Ghoul into. And how how different would this game be if Neri actually had a death bite? Because that's the card that he milled himself with. Yeah. 
Yeah, he did. He, he valued the coin. Uh, or maybe he just forgot that he has some cards. Mm -hmm. The game might have been a bit different. <laughs> Shield block. Okay, so he's playing this this version with more arm, armor gain and slam as well. It's more like a hybrid between control and and. Uh, I kind of like it though. Like against against some matchups, it seems pretty good. Like against this one, it seems all right. Yeah, shield, shield slam into shield maiden. So he's buying himself time. Mm -hmm. And is there any more drop for Asahida? He has no more draw, but he has all the threats. It's even more draw. All right, so Naria just put, uh, just keeping himself alive, uh, trying to get the combo pieces again. Yeah, the the problem is um, right now Asahida is lacking a little bit of damage now with that armor, and not only that, he can't activate Gromash anymore because it kills him. Yeah. Shield Slam Activator is uh, 12 damage. You might just yellow Alexstrasza here. Um, just put an Aider on board, deal 3 points of damage, and then just uh, go for it yeah. with your Shield Maiden. Well, we've we've seen both Executes from Nerea, and we saw Shield Slam, but we also saw a lot of armor gain. So, I mean, can you really expect another Shield Slam? <laughs> I don't think so. No, it's looking good. Like basically, there is not that many minions on board, and uh, you're also like being a Sahida. You don't have two um, minus attack minions that will actually spawn more patrons. Mm -hmm. So you're putting threats. You're mostly safe. Ooh. Thirty-nine points of health. I like the inner rage, but if he inner rages, he actually dies because the the shield slam will now actually work. Yep. Yeah. Actually, he was dead anyway because if if the uh, gnomish attacks the face for two damage, then Asahida can attack the Gnomish, get himself to eight, and then Shield Slam won't kill Gromash. Yeah, he'll be able to activate there. Yeah, that is lethal. Uh, just, uh, he has to see it. Shield Slam yeah. on Gromash is not that common. Uh, yeah, it is. Come on. That's <laughs> pretty common. Is it? Yeah. <laughs> he's thinking about it. No, he's not thinking about it. Okay. It's it's counterintuitive because normally you want to shield some opposing minions, and he's in the same situation. Like he's thinking, yeah, he's not thinking how to how to not die. With well, he he's, he didn't miss it yet. Yeah, he still has a chance to see it. This is just advanced VM, man. It's just for last game. It's payback. He's keeping his poker face. It's payback, man. Okay, now play Grumash and shield slam it. Grumash is. 4-9, four, four right? Okay, okay he, there's still a chance. Still a chance. Oh, and Iria's like, wow, I actually have another turn? No way. <laughs> wow! Okay. Lethalness again. Holy cow, what's going on? It's the second time, right? Yeah. But, like, what, what can you really do here? Like, you have to frothing the clear. Are you serious? That sucks. Well, he got the death spider, at least. Yeah, there's not, not nothing else. They just uh, play to survive. So this is six minions on board, uh, plus six on each frauding is 12, uh, plus four, 16, 18 points of damage. Not really. Almost. You, you, you have to even kill the shield maiden. Yeah, the threat of uh, just death's bite is a real one. Unless you're in a such a bad position that you think, hey, I, I'm dead to like everything. If he breathes loud, I'm dead. So I have to... Now, what, what do you think the chances are of immediately shield slamming the... Uh, oh, no. No, that, that extra turn that he had, Nerio's like, oh, so this is the type of game we're both playing. He, he did it, yeah, he didn't miss it again. So it's like counter BM. <laughs> oh, that's pretty amusing. That's po do you think it's possible, actually? Like, um... That Asahida missed B. Uh, <laughs> he didn't miss BM. Like he missed Lethal on purpose. Yeah, yeah. But here we are. Both players have one point on the board. Both players. Uh, the point that put him on the board was a missed Lethal into a realized Lethal. Uh, pretty interesting stuff. Not punished in either case. Uh, what do you think of Nerea's Grim Patron deck? Uh, you were saying how maybe you've seen something like it. Uh, in the past. I haven't seen anything like that exactly yet, but uh, maybe you watch a few of the tournaments that I don't. 
I, uh, I'm not sure if I've seen it uh, in any tournament. I've actually seen the list um, because there was this hybrid. Like I've seen uh, basically uh, an addition of one shield block to just gain mm. a bit of health against those aggro decks. But this is more of a hybrid with, uh, with even more armor. I haven't seen enough of it to actually have an opinion. It's it's a bit different. So and different is good. It's good to surprise your opponents, especially in single yeah. elimination tournaments. All right. Well, um, you know that surprise factor doesn't really carry over that well to day two when people probably study the decks of the opponents. Uh, but yeah, okay. I mean, getting through to day two is is uh, an accomplishment of its own. So here we have it. Uh, we have the, the decks we haven't seen yet. We have Rogue versus what seems to be Dragonlock. Yeah, it's, uh, it's Maligus Warlock, uh, a very, okay. very good deck. Uh, deck that I love as well. Basically, com another combo, really similar to, pa to Patron. You just try mm -hmm. to maintain board presence in the early game and then accumulate combo pieces, get Tauris on, uh, on board while you have the combo pieces. And combo pieces are basically Dark Bombs, Soul Fires, Maligus. Mm -hmm. Versus Rogue. Now, I've seen very little of, um, of Malagos Warlock myself. I know it's a pretty popular deck in general. Um, I just, I don't know, I've come across on ladder once and uh, didn't really seem very impressive and somehow missed every tournament that it was ever played in. Um, so, like, what, what do you want out of this deck? Like, what are you hoping to draw? How, do you, how are you hoping this plays out? So, um, right now his hand is really good for the early game. Uh, he has Coin Twilight Drake. He picked up another dragon for um, Darkwing Corruptor, a Blackwing Corruptor to, to work mm -hmm. as well. So he has a good curve. He will be able to put those big minions early. And what he hopes to draw is uh, some of the combo parts, as I said. So, so far, Dark Bomb Maligos. If, if he hits even one with Torison, that would be really, really amazing. Uh, but other than that, he'll be just uh, trying to build up a board and, um, and press Rogue. Because it's more about pressuring Rogue to win this matchup and, and killing Rogue's minions almost every turn. It seems like if the Rogue gets like uh, a really big combo with the weapon off, uh, it's not going to go too well for the Warlock. Uh, it works for every deck, actually. Like if, if Rogue gets a big weapon combo, most of the decks uh, just melt. Mm -hmm. But okay. if well, you, uh, you don't get pretty, a minion on board... bad Shredder result there. Yeah, I think he just perfect. wanted something with more than one health. Well, he was able to deal two damage at least, uh, but uh, for Naria, it doesn't look that good. He has, he has double sprint, but he doesn't have anything on turn six. And uh, yeah. Asahida really knows the matchup. You can see that by, uh, by him clearing and not overextending, not going for phase. Oh man. This, this is like a deadly poison set up in the bis right now. Yeah. Very good. Clear the board. Well, Naria is just trying to stall. I mean, um, the thing is, okay, so both players are trying to stall. Both players will probably have ridiculous combos in the late game. But uh, I feel like the Warlock needs to stall more. Yeah, yeah, Warlock needs to... Uh, it's not like he's just going to accumulate the, the weapon buffs and then win in one turn. That's what uh, Asahida is going to do. So Nairia will be, will, will be pushed. Uh, he will have to clear the minions. Every point of damage he takes will be getting uh, him closer to dying. Malaga's Warlock basically is... Let's say you have Dark Bomb Soul Fire, that's 17 points of damage with Malagos on one turn. So if you get to 17, you might be afraid of dying on, uh, on one turn, especially not after Torison. But I think this Torison was played too early. Mm -hmm. um, no combo parts will, will hit, which is terrible. Like, if you, right now the only combo that's available to Asahida will be Malagos plus Soul Fire, and that's no combo. That's nine points of damage, tops, and uh, like normally you just draw more. Uh, at, and you don't force stories and if you don't have anything in your hand. Yeah, yeah, I can see that. Um, okay. So he probably tried to just win with minions. It's not like you have to win with Malaga so far. You still have those big minions like Blackwing Corruptor, Lothab. Uh, Imp Gang was providing some board as well. Uh, very good card against the Rogue. But Naria is coming back. Like He is building up with Violet Teacher SI. He still has a second sprint. He is double... Uh, oil. Well, I think I think there's a good chance we're going to see the Hellfire here, isn't there? Uh, if you Hellfire, you can kill... I think you Hellfire first, so you end with two one ones. Yeah, I think it's fine to Hellfire. You, can, you also have the free Moral Coil, so you can basically Hellfire Implosion? Or just Implosion? And try... Okay, he's mm -hmm. risking. Oh man! Whoa! Get the five. 
High five, and then free more Morocco now. Always lucky as a heater, holy cow. Yeah, oh man, that was that was tough. And no flurry for Nairia. Sprint too, boys. It's not really the worst thing. I mean, the, the truth is with seven creatures, if they all kind of suck, it's not that bad. Yeah, but it's still seven points of damage, right? And yeah. uh, now with Hellfire and Dark Bomb, he doesn't need a Mulligus. It's uh, 13 points of damage. And now it's. Oh, and Soulfire. That's it's lethal. lethal. Yeah, it is. Pretty impressive. And uh, that only shows that Mulligus deck is. So I was talking about combo decks with someone uh, in the past, and he said that whenever you build a combo deck, if the deck can win without the combo, it's, it's a good deck. Yeah. And you can see it now. Does that mean my Holy Wrath Paladin deck is good? It's bad. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> you have to work on it. Yeah, well, we've been working on it a few years now. Maybe in a few years, you know? You'll get it. You'll, you'll It'll get it. It'll come back around. Yeah. Yeah. It'll be sure. a thing, I'm, I'm sure. It'll be a thing. All right, so Asahita takes another one. Asahita is on match point against Nuria. Um, we've seen a few slip ups in the first two games, but uh, pretty solid stuff in that one. Uh, pretty clear plays from what we saw. And uh, really, I think it just came down to Nuria just drawn really badly. Oh, certainly. Uh, when you have like turn six, he didn't have much. Like, fortunately for him, he only had the Eviscerate for, for Corruptor. Mm -hmm. Then just hard casting sprint without preparation, not really getting the cards he needed. Uh, so, pretty tough. Right now, versus Hunter. Hunter can always win. Like this is one of the decks that's not that not that punished by the draws. Uh, so if this is I feel face like, Hunter, I feel like Nerea's version of his Grim Patron will do pretty damn well against his Hunter because he has all those armor ups. So he gets he gets that extra turn or two, and he has the extra removal for the high mains of the Shield Slam. Um, yeah, it just feels pretty good because like if you can just establish like a Grim Patron that the Hunter can't handle, which is basically just a Grim Patron, you're you're gonna tend to win that game. That's true. If uh, but then again, like the deck may be a bit more clunky because you have those shield slams, you have shield maidens uh, instead of and you, uh, versus hunter, you will need some early game and uh, some more draw. Well, we are seeing the rogue instead here. Um, it's it looks like a game where vile teacher is gonna have to produce a lot of value, but the problem is that Sahida has double unleashed the hounds in hand. Now, some people were saying that Unleash the Hounds is kind of making a pretty big comeback in this mid-range Hunter deck, and we're seeing it here full swing. You play a lot of Hunter. What do you think about it? Double Unleash and mid-range. I think it's all right, because um, if if you think you're going to play versus... I, I've, all right, so Asahida basically knew that he's playing versus Naria, I believe, because we posted the bracket before, and then the players mm. had to submit the decks. So he might have expected the, the Violet Teacher row. Then playing double Unleash makes a lot of sense. Uh, if Paladin is uh, in the metagame, you might want to play double Unleash as well. Uh, personally, I'll play one. But in this case, against Violet t it might actually work. See, it's always Huffer! Huffer, double, boys. Double Huffer. Yeah. Uh, Huffer's a good one. Uh, even though it doesn't like challenge the board very well, I think you're really just trying to uh, seal out the game as fast as possible here. Yeah, it's, uh, because you, you have no good way to clear the board, uh, you might just go for face there. But then it doesn't, doesn't look that bad for Nyria. He has those minions, and he will have one heal. This turn, Asahida can't do much. Uh, but from turn 6-7, uh, Savannah Hyman into Boom. Can he not do much? I think we're just going to see Unleash face. 5 damage. Getting ever closer. Yeah, that, that is something. And Nairia will be, uh, will have to clear that. Oh, he's just going pick. for the trade. So Asahida is basically playing a mid-range hunter and he's going for face. I no. mean, it seems good. I mean, if, if you basically play face hunter and on turn 6 you have high main, on turn 7 you have Dr. Boom, isn't that like the dream? It is. That's why Hybrid was actually born. And yeah. Even though there was no boom still. It's on okay. Nairia. Well gets the, the flurry that that will be a lot of damage with that it has uh, a lot of damage but yeah. it's not really enough it's not enough to clear out the, the high main no sap for now hmm Revival well here's oh man this is where like the double unleash is really gonna shine because it feels like if you're Nerea here you're like yeah there's there's no chance he has double unleash like in hand but like, there's probably no chance he has it in the deck let alone has drawn it, right? 
Yeah, but uh, that would be only 15 points of damage, and Nyria can hope to maybe set up Lethal for next turn. Oh man, he hits the Violet Teacher, so he can actually be aggressive here. He doesn't really have to clear the high main. He's uh, dealing 9 plus 4, 13 points of damage. Mm -hmm. So if uh, if he plays a Violet Teacher, he might be threatening Lethal. So now, this is a very important call for Nerea. Do I trade and do I play it safe and secure? Or do I just uh, pull the trigger? Well, what can kill you here? Like, Kill Command Quick Shot is another 8 plus the 2. No, that's still not enough. There's like nothing that can actually kill you. If you go, if you play all those minions and you go face, you're probably dead to Unleash. Unleash and Kill Commands. Are you? He can only play Unleash and Kill Command, so it's it's six. If he doesn't clear the high main, oh, well, he clears the high main. Yeah. All what? right. Well, how about that? Yeah, that's a still a still a bit weak to Unleash though. Oh, oh my god! Oh my god! <laughs> what is happening? All right, Crip. If he hits face seven times, no, it's it's only six, right? Oh yeah, you're right. He cannot have lethal here. No, but it's it still impossible. It's hard. Uh, he will be. Wow! Able to... Look at those one ones. Okay, the first one just went down. Okay, now now they're back. Okay, they're they're being slain right now. Oh, rip one ones. So as a hunter, you're super happy about it. You basically clear, and then Nyria has only one card in hand. Yeah. And that's not good as a rogue. Yeah, yeah, it is. But it's, if you play it next turn, you're screwed. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess, like, if Nyria draws into sprint, he needs a sprint. Like, is there anything else? Oh my oh god! Oh my god! <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> Nyria back in the game? Maybe? Back, backstab would be pretty good here, too. Oh, no, Blade Flurry. No and bust. another sprint. Well, he is going to take a lot of damage. Like, the Doctor Boom is also three juggles. Keep that in mind. Yeah, he's not happy about the cards he got as well. This is where you realize just how strong the Boom Bots are. He's, he's basically dead on board right now. Uh, well, he has Doctor, well, BGH into Doctor Boom, and with that deadly poison, he will be able to do some damage. But uh, those, those bombs. Here you go, eight face. Eight face, and it's over. Eight face and it's over. Nyria is doing some gestures, so He's praying to the boom boom gods. Oh. That was pretty horrible. That was alright for uh, Asahida. Yeah. But he doesn't have lethal. No, but I mean Nyria has just played both blade flurries and he needs to come up with six damage from nothing. Uh, he basically has the Azure Drake until the last eviscerate from what I see. The light. Yeah. And that will be, uh, he has 9 points of mana, so that will be enough. He has two chances to draw this rate, it's probably like 15% or so. Oil. Ooh. It's, that's 4 point, if he, no, he can't really do, do much. Like, he, he needs to play yeah. Azurjig. It's like, Azurjig or Sprint. If you Sprint, you might, he used double preparation, so... No, you can't Sprint into anything. Yeah. Sprint is lost for sure. That's not it. It's not good enough. That's, that's game. That's game. Asahida takes it. Three wow. points to Nerea's one. A this second is not clear. Yeah, this is not Nerea's tournament after all. Not this time, bro. So Nerea loses in the uh, the first round again. Uh, HTC one, he lost uh, as well in, in round one. A second mm -hmm. qualifier player takes it. And uh, oh man, those guys are really prepared. Like they they went through the qualifiers from many players, uh, and okay. they are fighting here. I, I mean, in, in this case, it seems to be the case that uh, Nerea kind of took a lot of risks with like the, the cheesy decks, as you called them. And uh, I think that is kind of what cost him a little bit. Um, oh, I see the bracket there. We see, yeah, the two qualified players moving on. Up next, we will have Sho versus uh, Gara. But uh, as far as that match, it seems like that match was mostly won because Nerea took some risks and the risk did not pay off. But it actually seemed against... Um, uh, Ecop against uh, Bunny Muffin. That Ecop was the one that was uh, better prepared. Don't, don't yeah. you agree with that? I, I do. I do agree with that. Uh, but Bunny Muffin was able to. Well, Ecop had a really terrible draws in the Warrior game, mm -hmm. and I think that basically, even though he had a better lineup, possibly uh, he was favored in the matchups. Um, he got a bit unlucky there. And Bunny Muffin uh, also didn't give him a chance. He played really well consistently. Uh, he played his own style. 
so mm -hmm. uh, he was able to take it here. Um, well, both players were doing some misplays, but overall, um, as you said, like didn't work for Nairia this time. Uh, Sahida, um, Sahida played really consistently, I think. Yep, absolutely. Um, the main slip up was the the, the Gramash play. Yeah, but uh, I mean, Nairia made his own uh, misplay in a very similar fashion in the game before, so yeah. It is what it is. I think it made the games a bit more interesting, so I'm I'm good with it. We don't necessarily need to see the best plays every single turn, right? That's true. Uh, but it's still a very good lineup from uh, from Asahida. So I, I'm actually excited to see him play tomorrow against um, who is he playing against? Like I'm I don't remember, but yet to be determined. Um, it's it's gonna be the winner, I think. Strife Crow and uh, his opponent. No, Trump versus Love Coach. Oh, Asahida. Dog Purple Drunk. Yes. Yeah, Dog Sorry. Purple Drunk. Yeah. So the winner of that match will move on to the second day and face off against Asahita in All probably right. what's going to be the second game of uh, of tomorrow. For now, though, we're going to get ready for the show versus Gara match. That's going to be coming up in about five or so minutes. We're going to need some time to set up, get the players ready. And uh, yeah, stick with us, guys. Hope you guys are in the tournament so far. We won't be long. So I'll see you guys soon.